Hello again, thanks for staying with us. Preparations for the relaunch of the new South African Airways is moving at a snail's pace. So far, the management has prioritised the renewal of expired safety licences. The strategic equity partnership with Takato has not yet been consummated. It's still a long road ahead before SAA can take to the skies again. It's been over a month since government announced the 51% sale of SAA to the Takatso Consortium. But there seems to be little or no movement in concluding some of the paperwork. A sign that negotiations on the structure of the company could be tough. The company's Intellectual Property Commission, the CPIC, is still waiting for SAA to update its registration. SAA has also not amended its memorandum of incorporation. In terms of our internal workflow system, we have not received a, a change to the memorandum of incorporation for SAA. In terms of the Companies Act, any changes to directorship of any company requires that the company must inform the CIPC within 10 business days after the change has occurred of that change, who the person is and the person's contact details, address, uh, ID number, etc. So. In the case of SAA, it has been noted that after it exited business rescue at the end of April, there has been three changes to the directorship of the company. But looking at the documents, it's more minor changes re relating to non-executive. But the airline has been making progress in some areas. SAA has been hard at work taking its aircraft out of preservation storage and replacing many of the expired components as well as ensuring that the pilots and cabin crew currencies are renewed. SAA also recently applied for the compliance certificate with the Civil Aviation Authority. So far, the CAA has flagged a number of non-compliance issues with the national flag carrier. The South African Airways applied for the renewal of their air operator certificate on the 1st of April and that was followed up by what you call the renewal audit in order to ensure compliance with the civil aviation regulation prior to the issuance of air operator certificate. Where we are with the process currently, we had noted some non-conferences during our audit. An operator is afforded the opportunity to address those non-compliances prior to us concluding the transaction with them. CAA says the ball is currently in SAA's courts to correct all areas of non-compliance. At this stage, we basically guided by the submission of the corrective action plan from the applicant. Only then, once that has been found acceptable, we will be able to issue the uh, air operator certificate. So the, at this stage, the process is mostly in the hands of the applicant or the operator. Good news is that if SAA succeeds in addressing all its non-compliances, the airline could have its operator certificate by the end of this month. This is just one hurdle to overcome, with many more before SAA can finally spread its wings to fly again. Tepo Mungwai, SABC News, Johannesburg.